thousands of years before last glacial maximum, our ancestors arrived to Nordic regions. They had left Africa nearly 100,000 years ago and now were facing harsh climate conditions. Where possible, early humans migrated and settled close to the rivers or other water bodies because rivers were a source of life for many. Freezing temperature was not the only thing they needed to adapt to. Lack of UV light in higher latitudes reduced pre-vitamin D3 synthesis in our skin. To make most of the scars UV light, natural selection favored loss of melanin and gradually paled their skins through generations. Therefore, occasional sun baths during picnics serve as a good source of vitamin D. Food is scarce and nothing goes for waste. However, one cannot survive entirely feeding on carrions. Romanians had to undertake extensive hunting trips. It was not an easy task as Neanderthals already prevailed those cold hunting grounds before modern humans. Neanderthals were physically stronger and presumably more adapted to cold climate. Nevertheless, our ancestors were able to gradually outcompete Neanderthals, but it took tens of thousands of years. During this period, most people lived a hunter-gatherer lifestyle and were constantly on the move. However, there are early examples of permanent settlements which are almost always associated with fishing as a major source of food. Fishing is an ancient practice that dates back at least to the Upper Paleolithic. The control of fire by early humans was a turning point in the cultural aspect of human evolution that allowed humans to cook food and obtain warmth and protection since the ages of Africa. Making fire also allowed expansion of human activity into the dark and colder hours of the night and provided protection from predators and insects. According to one theory, thermal processing of foods might trigger brain expansion by allowing foods to become more digestible and allow humans to absorb more food energy per unit of food consumed. However, the mainstream view among anthropologists is that the increase in human brain size occurred well before the advent of cooking due to a shift away from the consumption of nuts and berries to the consumption of meat. Paleolithic hunting and gathering people ate varying proportion of leafy vegetables, fruits, nuts and insects, meat and fish and shellfish. While humans greatly expanded their area of settlement, adapting their diets to whatever local resources available. Anthropologists have diverse opinions about the proportions of plant and animal foods consumed. Just as with still existing hunters and gatherers, there were many varied diets in different groups and also varying through this vast amount of time. Some Paleolithic hunter-gatherers consumed a significant amount of meat and possibly obtained most of their food from hunting, while others are shown as a primarily plant-based diet. Most, if not all, are believed to have been opportunistic omnivores. It is thought that Paleolithic diet included as much as from 1.6 to 1.9 kilograms per day of fruit and vegetables. The relative proportions of plants and animal foods in the diets of Paleolithic people often varied between regions, with more meat being necessary in colder regions. Despite all the disagreements between Romanians and Neanderthals, these subspecies managed to occasionally interbreed. The Nisova people have also left genetic traces in some modern human populations. Most probably, we owe our latest evolutionary success to our brain, yet we struggle to comprehend the nature of consciousness and pin down its essential properties. After extinctions of Neanderthal, Flores and Denisova humans 
in the last 30,000 years, we are the only carriers of complex consciousness on Earth. But for how long? Could it be that we are seeing last prosperity of biological consciousness, which is soon to be replaced by the rise of artificial intelligence?